This is the presentation eight. And we are preparing to pray with the pages from The Ignatian Adventure by Kevin O'Brien, pages 191 to 207. So those are the pages uh, centered around oh, a decision and uh, oh, the evil inclinations that are within us and around us. A maxim. Because decision asks for faithfulness to the decision. Fidelity is rooted in gratitude. Infidelity is rooted in envy and disappointment. Envy and disappointment. I will, I will be faithful as long as it's successful, as long as it's pleasurable, as long as I have more than anybody else. So envy and disappointment, I'm disappointed in her, him, them, it, myself. Fidelity is being faithful because of gratitude for the limitations I find within the experience of living out what Ignatius calls and what you will be praying with in these pages, the election, the choice. But one big question is, and we pray it every day, what is God's will? Thy will be done. What is God's will? We have a will based on what we know. You like peanut butter or you don't like peanut butter. You like peanut butter with jelly. It's what you know. You are limited by what you know. Your, your will is not free, actually. It's bounded by what you know. You can't make a will act on what you don't know. God doesn't have a will like that. This might be a little difficult, and it's a little th theology. God's will is to be God. God is love, that's all God is. In a way, hold on now, God does not have a will like we have a will. Will is a function of our intellects. We are complex. God is simple, God is love. So all God wants to do is love. God's will is to love. God's will is to be God. For us, and this is really difficult, for us, God's will is for us to make a decision based on what we know, based on our experience, to make a decision and then trust God to do something with the decision I made because I was an appropriate human being. I did what a human being does. I think, I experience, I make a decision, an election, and now my decision is to watch how is God going to be faithful considering how I use the gift of senses and intellect he gave me. So the object of God's will is for God to be faithful to us, that making a decision, what we are faithful to is, how is God being faithful to me and to us? So God wants to be faithful to being loved. We want to be loved by God and trust that love and to be faithful to it even when we are disappointed and experiencing envy. To be faithful to it, to see how is God going to be God? God's will is to be God. So in, in making the exercises, we are 
are watching this human Jesus, and, and we've, we've stressed that, that Jesus lived by faith. You say, well, he was God, he, he knew, and this has been a heresy, uh, a field of heresies, and we've spoken of this before. Was, was Jesus really human? Did he, did he struggle to trust God? Yes. Yes, we'll see that. And so we have what Ignatius called the rules for discernment, especially during the second week, during how, how closely will I follow Jesus? Now, we may have said it before, uh, we are, if it's worth doing, if a, if, a, if, a, if a decision is worth trusting God, it's, it's worthy of a, of a spiritual decision. It's worthy of a use of our gifts. If it's, a, if it's a holy decision, then it's worthy of being tempted. Let me say that again. Our, our good decisions our good processes of, of thinking about things, of course it's going to be tempted. So if it's worthy of a decision of faith, it's going to be tempted. Get, get used to it and don't, don't say, oh, I'm tempted, I must be unfaithful. No, you are being faithful. As Jesus was to his temptations, we are faithful by allowing the temptations to be there, to be real, and to pray with them to deal with them. So that we follow the humanity of Jesus. Did, did, because otherwise, you see, if, if Jesus is faking it, then he's calling us to faith, a faith that he didn't have to live. He's calling us to a life that was more difficult in trusting than his life. So we follow a Jesus that lived by faith, not by certainty. Now there are three patterns and you will pray with them and reflect on them in your own life and they're really interesting and it's very, very important and, and kind of enjoyable. How, how do we usually get tempted? There are patterns and uh, Ignatius has three of them and you will see in O'Brien uh, the stamping nasty little angry child. I want my cookies. And if you say to the child, no, you can't have cookies now, and you're strong about it, the little child will give up. But if you give up, he has learned, or she has learned, that all I have to do is stamp my foot and I get cookies. So the, the pattern of stubbornness but if stubbornness is, melt, is met with force, a kind force, but force, the child uh, will live to fight another day. And the second one is, uh, he's got a, a suitor or a false lover trying to seduce the young maiden and what he says, and this is uh, Ignatius' thing, secrecy. Let's just, it's just between you and me. And we won't talk about it to anyone. Secrecy is, is kind of a sign of temptation lived, lived with. Let's, let's just keep this between you and me. But if the tempted, goes to someone, a spiritual director, a friend, and talks about it, the, tempta the temptation will be seen as a temptation. And people say you are as sick as your secrets. And the third temptation is, um, uh, in his ways, as a military man, he said, what a, what a leader, a general will do, I will attack you I will go around and search and search until I find where are the weaknesses in your walls. Uh, say in football, the, the offense wants to find out where is the defense weakest. And let's, let's run there, let's pass there. And evil one wants to know our secret. 
our, our, uh, our weaknesses. So what's really helpful in the spiritual life is to not be angry at your weaknesses. But to be watchful, of course I'm going to be tempted. Where are my weaknesses? It, what is my weakness? I might be fearful. By nature, I'm a fearful person. Or by nature, I'm, uh, I'm, I, I compare myself. I, I need to know how I'm doing. Or I, I need to get myself from your opinion of me or whatever. Know your weaknesses, and the evil one will run into a stone wall. O'Brien talks a little bit about the kingdom of God in a, in a very good way. Um, it might be a way of looking, the kingdom of God is how Jesus works out the reconstruction of the garden in Genesis. That's one way of looking, that, that we enter into God's continued creation with Christ. What we are doing is trying to bring about light life and love, peace, justice. All that was destroyed in Genesis by the sin of Adam and Eve, Jesus is working to reconstruct that Jesus is the intensification as savior, is the intensification of God's creative love. So we, we, are, we are trying to not do God's will as a decision, but God's will as a way of loving this world. How can I more enter in with Christ, according to Christ's ways? And so we have this process, and we may have spoken of it before. Awareness is very difficult. Self-awareness can be humbling. Yet it's very freeing to know our weaknesses, our, our places of temptation, our strengths, our gifts. Self-awareness is the beginning of the process of entering into God's kingdom, working with Christ, creating God's kingdom. The second step after awareness, and, and it's, it's how good relationships are in community and ministry, I will become aware of myself. Do I have the humility to be surprised by that I'm not God, that I'm not perfect, that I break rules and that I'm fragile? That can be very humbling. It takes humility to be surprised by my truth. But it leads then to the degree to which I will be aware, I will accept. The self. Self-acceptance, eh, it's pretty difficult because we'd like to be better. We'd like to go beyond envy and disappointment to being faithful. And maybe acceptance is being faithful to the creation that I am. And because I can't give what I don't like, and I can't like what I don't know, acceptance is a grateful grace and prayer, say, yes, this is who I am, and this is who and what I am not. I am just, oh, no, not just. I remember meeting a student here at the university, and I said, I asked her her name, and she said, well, I'm just a freshman. I said, no, you are a freshman at Creighton University, and you will grow in the acceptance of that, not just. So I'm not just, I am what I am by the grace of God. Paul says that. And that's the acceptance in gratitude. And when I am grateful, I will move towards generosity, donation, community, service, extending God's creative love into the lives of others. And so we go to this election, which is, a, uh, it's not probably doing something different. It may be doing the things I do, doing them differently uh, with grace and peacefulness and confidence that God is 
working through me. So maybe it's not doing something different, but being a person deeper that knows his or her spirits, temptabilities, strengths, but to, to, to make a decision, I'm going to decide, I'm going to elect to do this, and God will bless it. Now some people, I know, I know, I talk to people, they think God, uh, God's will is everything. God's will is that I raise my right hand. No, it's my will. God's will is to constantly bless me. I make bad choices and God says, I won't give up on you. I will continue to create my will in you. And my will is for you to trust me. Trusting God is the way that we fulfill the first commandment of loving. So it's not to make an election and you'll pray with it. And, you, and how, how do I want to be a partner and a revealer with Jesus. See, wanting to do better, the problem, the problem of wanting to do better is it's usually about me. How can I better appreciate myself? Now, how can I be more a person who trusts the gifts that God has given us? To, to trust that God will abide with me. It, 60 years ago, I entered the Jesuits. How would I ever know that that's the right thing? Because I am successful? Well, there have been times when I wasn't successful. But I'd be happy? There have been many times when I haven't been happy, joyful. No, it's not that. It's to watch, I, I give my life to watch how is God going to be faithful to me. Now, one important thing uh, that I, I want to point you to, especially in page 204, where Ignatius and O'Brien talks how God communicates with us extremely unique and personally. And I can't ask, how does God communicate with you? I can't ask you, how does an orange taste? Only I know what an orange tastes like. I know it's an orange the way it tastes. I assume that it tastes the same way to you, but I can't be sure. God creates uh, a desire in us, and we get in touch with what do we desire? the depth of our desires. And Ignatius says, please get in touch with what, what gives you life? What, what, what is a, an experience of your creating others? And you read uh, Father Michael Himes, three things. What gives you joy? That would be a, a way of understanding what God's will is. Here's one. What are you good at? That God has given us gifts. Do that. As I said, God, God touches us, attracts us through the gifts he's given us. We like to display our gifts. But are we, are we displaying our gifts for our own personal improvement and exploration and expo exposure? No. My gifts, what I'm good at, might have a better chance at letting God's goodness out. And then, what is needed? What does this world need of me or us? And to decide, considering what the world needs, what is my gift? In an image, let's say, say everybody has a paint can. 
and there's paint in it and you have a brush. Other people have different brushes and different paints. Maybe I've used that image before, but it's, it's fun to know that you are to paint the world according to your color, according to your, the, the breadth of your brush. So this is an important uh, experience in the exercises. It, it's an encounter with our unfreedoms, our fears, our poverty, and not to be negative about what's real about my humanity. Jesus was real in his humanity and calls us out of our, along with our true humanity. Do I want to follow Jesus? Well, yes, but I won't do it perfectly. He says, I'll take it. I'll take you and you'll be uh, experiencing your poverty but I will always do something through your poverty. One final thing, um, I'll talk about it more next time. In the Eucharistic prayer, The celebrant takes the bread, blesses it, breaks it, and gives it to his disciples. That's, that's the prayer of the Eucharist. That's the prayer of the exercises. That the call, the taking, in the poverty that is human, we've, he, he came among us as a human to bless our human condition and to use us as human instruments of his divine revelation. So he takes it and blesses it. Says, this is good. My relationship with you blesses it. But the breaking is necessary before the distribution. What are we broken from? That's what we've been praying with in the exercises. Broken from worldly expectations that I have of what I should be. Breaking me from negativity. Breaking me from old names. Breaking me from, as Ignatius would say, disorders. Things that have destroyed my goodness. There's a lot of breaking in the relationship with Jesus. Names, depart from me, I am a sinful man. Jesus said, you are, but that's not my name for you. I will give you a new name. He broke Peter, he broke Paul broke Ignatius, broke all the saints from one worldly concept and definition and picture and image, breaking us from that which prevents us from distribution, hiding, secrecy. And he calls us, blesses us, recreates us, for the purpose of distribution, ministry, mission. So we'll pray with that these weeks. A poem then to finish by Robert Frost. The road not taken. Two roads diverged in the yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other, as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that, the passing there had warn them really about the same. 
And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, though knowing how ways lead on to ways. I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood and I I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference 